What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. Today, we've got another live fantasy football mock draft for you back on ESPN with a 10-team full PPR mock where we will be selecting fifth overall right smack dab in the middle of it all. So it should be pretty interesting. And while we wait for this thing to kick off, a quick reminder, if you guys enjoy, hit that like button, subscribe, give us a follow on Twitter at All Day Pigskin to continue interacting with us there. Let us hear it in the comment section, your thoughts along with any other questions you guys might have. We will do our best to answer them all. But with that being said, let's get right into it. And we're still waiting on the first pick to be made. But Right now, you know, we are in that fifth spot. So what I'm truly hoping for is that if one of Austin Eckler and or Christian McCaffrey falls to me, then that's going to be the no brainer immediate pick. And let's see. Let's see if we get lucky. Maybe there's a pass catcher here that sneaks into the top four, um, as has been the case sometimes here on ESPN where they love their pass catchers. I still anticipate uh, a rankings update on ESPN uh, in the next, you know, couple of weeks, but we'll see. So the first three picks are in, and this is the moment of truth. Are we going to see Austin Eckler being selected here, or is it going to be another individual? And we get lucky big time because the first Four picks are as follows. Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, Christian McCaffrey. We're hoping we might see him. But then Tyreek Hill sneaks into the top four. And this is a no-brainer. We are going Austin Eckler. Eckler could be the 101 pick. And, you know, he's at the premier position in fantasy football, the running back position. I say this all the time. You know, running backs, contrary to popular belief, are still the most important position. There's the most injury there. Um, You know, there's the biggest drop off there. And uh, it it really is a premier position, especially with uh, running backs by committees kind of becoming the norm, things of that nature. And when you can get an elite pass catching running back like an Austin Eckler, you do so 10 times out of 10. But I'm just pulling up the round one pick history here. So obviously we went with Austin Eckler fifth overall. Then you see Travis Kelsey, Bijan Robinson, Derek Henry, Saquon Barkley, and Cooper Cup. So Cooper Cup probably drops to the number 10 spot because of you know his little uh, hamstring aggravation. I don't think it's going to be anything too serious. Uh, so I'm not super worried. I'm still drafting him as a first round guy. Uh, And then the second round kicks off. I mean, you know, as far as first round takeaways, I don't like seeing Derrick Henry go that high. I continue to say this over and over and over, especially in full PPR settings. You know, uh, I would be selecting Nick Chubb uh, ahead of him. If we knew what the hell was going to happen with Jonathan Taylor and Josh Jacobs, I would be selecting both those guys ahead of Derrick Henry as well. But uh, let's take a look at the big board because we're back on the clock. The first couple of picks have been made here, and I'm not going to lie, there's a couple of very, very tempting names. So Tony Pollard is one of the names that's very tempting, but we got an Austin Eckler. So right now, you know, I think we can allow ourselves to go pass catcher and CeeDee Lamb pretty damn tempting here. So that's the direction I'm going in. If it wasn't going to be CeeDee Lamb, it was going to be Garrett Wilson. Um, So, you know, I, I think it's very, very comparable. Uh, either way, I went with C.D. Lamb. It's splitting hairs. You know, one mock I might go C.D. Lamb, the other mock I might go Garrett Wilson type of deal. So again, to me, they are right there, neck and neck. You know, if you want to say, oh, Garrett Wilson's a little bit banged up right now, uh, that's why you go C.D. Lamb. Sure, even though I think similar to a Cooper Cup, the Garrett Wilson ankle issue isn't going to be that big of a deal. But let's break down the second round here because you know um, we still haven't had a chance to do so. With the first pick in the second round, we had Amon Ra St. Brown. Uh, I'm a big Amon Ra fan, and I don't really have too many issues with that. You know, I think Devontae Adams, Stephon Diggs have a little bit higher upside, but uh, again, very close. Nick Chubb then, I love that selection. Jonathan Taylor makes it to the second round uh, with his issues. You know, uh, again, we just really have to monitor that. That could end up being the biggest storyline of this kind of preseason. Then Devontae Adams, Stephon Diggs, the top two wide receivers that were left on the board, or at least the big names, kind of veterans. 
than some of the young guys, right? We went C.D. Lamb, then Garrett Wilson, A.J. Brown, and then Josh Jacobs falls. Uh, I'd be drafting Josh Jacobs ahead of Jonathan Taylor, at least. You know, if we're talking just skill-wise, probably Jonathan Taylor, but um, it's a situation where I think that you just uh, have a little bit more confidence in uh, in Josh Jacobs playing right now. So here we are on the board. I'm a little bit bummed out. I'm not going to be selecting a quarterback here. I don't believe in that. I'm probably going to go Chris Olave here. I'm looking at the names and, you know, I've said this before, Chris Olave is my favorite third round selection and I stand by that. So uh, we are committing to that. You know, Jalen Hurts, sure. Okay. He's one of the top three tier one quarterbacks, but I would be perfectly fine getting a Justin Herbert, getting a Trevor Lawrence four rounds later. And to me, that's what it boils down to. So um, let's see what else happened. Uh, Tony Pollard with the last pick in the second round, tremendous value. Then the third round, uh, Jalen Waddell would have loved for him to, you know, kind of drop. Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, and then T. Higgins. So a run on the top quarterbacks, but I've said this time in and time out. If I have a chance to land a difference maker at the running back or at the wide receiver position, as opposed to one of these top tier quarterbacks, I will do so every single time. And I think that's exactly what we have in Chris Olave uh, with somebody, you know, maybe like a uh, Ramondre Stevenson with a Travis Etienne. All those guys were on my radar ahead of a Jalen Hurts. You know, I didn't feel as pressured to take um, a Travis Etienne or a Ramondre Stevenson because I got a league winner in Austin Eckler. So continued to load up on pass catchers. Now here, uh, again, we're in a very, very interesting position. And this is why I love picking right in the middle of, of really any draft is because the value that gets back to you is absolutely insane. And here again, getting Keenan Allen as a flex option on my team in full PPR, I think is absolutely insane. So I'm going to do exactly that. And then in the fifth round, I'm hoping that either Alvin Kamara or Miles Sanders fall to me. And I would be extremely, extremely happy. Um, you know, sure, Alvin Kamara suspended for three games, but that's really not too much. We were expecting potentially twice as many games as that. We were expecting six games at one point in time, only three. And, you know, I still think he is going to be a difference maker as far as, uh, fantasy quarterbacks are concerned, especially with the upgrade at the quarterback position. And I know what you're saying. Look, well, you're loading up on multiple players from the same offense, Austin Eckler, Keenan Allen. Yes, Chris Olave, maybe Alvin Kamara. And yes, again, I get it. Trust me, I do. But I think, you know, when the guys at those positions are elite, like an Austin Eckler and get Keenan Allen, like a Chris Olave and potentially an Alvin Kamara, exceptions can be made. Um, and especially when it's at premier positions too. But we're not going to have that problem here because Alvin Kamara just got selected with the second pick in the fifth round. I still think that's an absolute steal. I think his ADP, honestly, should be a third, fourth rounder right now. Gone are going to be the days where we can get him, you know, in the latter, latter rounds. I, I guess it depends on the platform you're drafting on, right? Um, that's going to play into it. But to me, it's a situation where, um, I'm just, uh, I'm preparing for that ADP to skyrocket a little bit, but we're back on our selection here. We're back on the clock and I'm going Miles Sanders here. I need another running back. And to me, this is absolutely a no brainer. So let's go Miles Sanders. We've got an RB two, and I feel really, really good about this team. Like if this was my actual team, this one might be one of my favorite rosters that we've put together in a mock draft situation. And honestly, I would say it's pretty realistic. Like the most far-fetched thing might be like Austin Eckler falling to you fifth overall, but even that's not that crazy considering how obsessed people have been with pass catchers. Maybe Keenan Allen falling to us in the fourth round. That, that's been kind of the wildest thing. Let's see some of these other selections here though. Um, 
So in the fourth round, breaking down the fourth and fifth round, fourth round, we had Najee Harris, Devonta Smith, Debo, Aaron Jones, Joe Mixon, good value there. We went with Keen Allen, I think a really, really good value. Mark Andrews dropped. Uh, I'm not the biggest Mark Andrews fan. I think there's going to be way too many mouths to feed there. I still don't think Lamar is going to be a throw first quarterback. So that's just me. Amari Cooper, Damian Pierce, Jameer Gibbs. And then the fifth round, I think we had some really, really good values here, right? We saw Calvin Ridley. We saw Alvin Kamara. Um, Miles Sanders, who we got. TJ Hawkinson in the fifth round even is a very, very good value pick. Uh, So I like that for us uh, in terms of the value that we were able to get in that round uh, at a position of need, right? Miles Sanders, Lamar Jackson then went, DeAndre Hopkins. Ooh, Trevor Lawrence sneaking into the last pick in the fifth round. I don't mind it. I really, really don't. Um, You know, it's a pick that we've got two more selections. Like we need a quarterback. Let's see what it drops to us. Steelers defense with the first pick in the sixth round. We've officially got our first absolutely God awful pick. So um, maybe that might be a situation where it was an auto pick. I'm not sure. Um, But we're on the clock here and we can go one of two ways. I probably will be going quarterback. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Um, The question is, do we want to go with Justin Herbert or Justin Fields? So if we went with Justin Herbert, we would have the Uber stack of the Chargers, Austin Eckler, Keenan Allen, and then Justin Herbert. I'm going to diversify things a little bit here. I'm going to go with Justin Fields. I'm going to go with the high rushing upside. And as much as I love Justin Herbert, it does kind of scare me a little bit. If we go with Herbert and then the Chargers have a, you know, uh, for some reason or another, an off week, and then that more or less is going to guarantee that we, well, might be losing that week because uh, I think it becomes a situation where it's going to be too much to overcome. So that's why if I typically go with a stack, I don't do it with more than two players, and I prefer it to be a quarterback and a running back, ideally. But in this case, we got running back wide receiver. Um, so, you know, but I do think it was a situation where the value was just too good to, p- to pass up. So let's go back to the big board here. There's still a lot of really good names, folks. You know, uh, we could pass up on tight end in favor of going with the Marquise Brown or a James Conner. And I-, I think both of those names are going to be very, very tempting for me here. Probably going to give the edge to James Conner since we need a little bit more depth at running back compared to wide receiver. And of course, funny enough, as soon as I say that, James Conner is drafted here. So it's okay. Now I guess Marquise Brown becomes the top name potentially. Um, but I guess we still do need tight end. So let's just let's just lock down our tight end position so we're not worried about it. And then we're going to do what we can Uh, best player available in round eight. So we went with Kyle Pitts. Also, how did I just now see this? Kenneth Walker dropping to the seventh round. That's something, I don't know how that escaped me, but that that is something that I would call atypical. Um, Let's break down the sixth round really fast. Other than the Steelers pick, you know, Darren Waller, Chris Godwin, Deontay Johnson, Christian Watson, Justin Fields. Uh, The trend lately has been Darren Waller going ahead of guys like George Kittle, Kyle Pitts. I don't know if I'm fully able to commit to that. Um, I don't believe in Daniel Jones, so that's part of the reason why. Then we went Justin Fields, Cam Akers, DJ Moore, George Kittle, Justin Herbert, some really good values there. Um, In the seventh round, we got uh, the round kicked off with Mike Evans, Terry McLaurin. I was really hoping James Conner would fall to us. Doesn't happen. Kenneth Walker here. I'm still trying to find out why that happened, possibly because of you know the injuries. We went with Kyle Pitts. Uh, then Alexander Madison, a nice value pick, uh, in my opinion, You know, starting running back. Mike Williams, Evan Ingram, DeAndre Sm- Swift, Pat Fryermuth, and then kicking off the eighth round, Jackson Smith and Jigba and Deshaun Watson. So because there's some auto picks here, Marquise Brown will not make it back to us, but we've got some other really, really good options you know, as far as pass catchers, if we wanted to, like a Brennan Ayuk, um, for example. But what I'm really looking at here, I'm looking at the running back position, and I'm hoping James Cook falls to us. You know, he'd be the next kind of highest ranked upside running back, and we need some more depth at running back. So I do think I'm going to go in that direction. And then 
We're going to make one final selection after that and kind of wrap this thing up. So I'm curious to see what will happen, what players will fall to us. But either way, whoever falls to us in the ninth round at this point in time is going to be a tremendous value pick, in my opinion. The top names that I would prefer, Brendan Ayuk, Michael Pittman. Um, Brendan Ayuk just got drafted. I anticipate Michael Pittman won't be too far off. Um, you know, let's see running back. Samaji P. Ryan is still there. Wide receivers. Um, Jordan Addison is somebody that I like, you know, that I'm high on this year. So he might be the pick here. Let's see where they kind of stack up. It's either going to be, yeah, I mean, J.K. Dobbins is banged up right now, but um, he's a possibility as well. I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with Samaji Piran. He's a guy I'm going to, you know, preach, uh, practice what you preach. And I believe he's now scored Javante Williams. So I'm going with him, getting value. And then we can queue up somebody like a Jordan Addison, you know, um, there you go. But honestly, with that being said, we kind of can wrap this thing up. We've gotten pretty deep into this. I think we've gotten a good sense of what our roster looks like. I really, really like this team. I think it's a B plus type of team. Um, and, you know, I'd be very happy if this was the real deal. Let me know your thoughts. If you guys enjoyed, hit that like button, subscribe, give us a follow on Twitter at AllDayPigskin to continue interacting with us there. But in the meantime, we'll see you guys in future videos.